This screencast covers the course information and syllabus. If you have not already done so, please print out a copy of the course information and syllabus that I have provided to you. I encourage you to stop the screencast uh, where appropriate and read on the various topics that I am discussing. Also, um, if you have not already done so, I encourage you to read the syllabus from beginning to end, make any notes or write down any questions that you may have so that I can address them on the first day of uh, class. This screencast will cover the following topics. I'm going to start by providing you information on how you can contact me. Then we'll talk specifically about the class, when the class meets, where it meets, etc. I'll talk briefly about the prerequisites for the class. I'll talk about the textbook for the class as well as the lab manual. I'll discuss grading. I'll really break down what composes your grade, both for lab and lecture. We will discuss missed work and what you are allowed to make up and what you are not. I will briefly talk about the lab and the lecture schedule. I'll then talk about the process of withdrawing from a course and what the deadline for withdrawal is. And lastly, I will discuss the Anatomy and Physiology Place open access website. The information contained on your course information and syllabus is very important. It is basically your owner's manual and handbook for the class. It is an agreement between me, your instructor, and you, the student. So make sure that you become familiar with its content and that you refer to it often. If you were to lose your hard copy, of the course information and syllabus, there is an electronic copy available on Blackboard. Let's take a moment to talk about the best way to reach me. My office is on the second floor in the B section of the building, B2200. However, if you just randomly drop by, I may or may not be there. I don't spend an awful lot of time in my office, so it's unlikely that you'll actually catch me there unless you have an appointment or something of that nature. If you need to reach me urgently, the best way to do that is to call my office number at 246-6843. Now, I said I'm not often in my office, but uh, you can always leave a voicemail message. And if you leave a voicemail message, it goes to my email, which I can access from my phone or anywhere as long as I have access to the internet, internet which is pretty much all the time. Now, when you leave a voicemail message, please speak clearly and slowly. I have students that run through their messages so quickly, I can barely understand what they're saying, especially when they leave the digits of their phone numbers. So make sure you speak clearly and you speak slowly. My office hours are Monday, 12.30 to 1.30 in the learning lab. That's room C3438. And I'll talk about the learning lab on the first day of class. On Thursdays, I have office hours from 12.45 to 1.30 p.m. in room E3885. And that's the room that you have your regular weekly labs in. Now, let me take a moment to talk about office hours. First of all, office hours don't mean that they're actually held in my office. As you see, they're actually held in labs. Second, office hours are hours that are set aside where students can show up and talk with me unannounced. You don't have to make an appointment. You can just show up. I set aside this time for students and I encourage you to please please come and see me. Now you are certainly welcome to make an appointment for my office hours and in that way if someone else shows up 
as a walk-in at the same time you do, you have priority. Otherwise, it's first come, first service. Now, I'll tell you, traditionally, very few students come to see me doing office hours. So uh, it's not very likely that there's going to be a line if you come to office hours. So more than likely, you can just show up for office hours and you can see me immediately. But um, if you want to make an appointment, you're certainly able to do that. Also, let's say these office hours don't work for you because of your class schedule and your working schedule. That's not a problem. We can make an appointment to meet at some other time. So my office hours, you can drop in at any time. If they don't work for you, we can make appointments outside of office hours. The bottom line is I am here for you. Please use me. Often students struggle in the class, but they never come to see me to get help. I am here for you. Please use me. So when and where does the class meet? Your first day of class will be Thursday, January 23rd. You will have 15 weeks of regular class and then on the 16th week you will have your final exam. The class meets only on Thursdays from 11.30 to 12.45 in room B3279. That's on the third floor in the B section of the building. You are in one of two lab sections. If you are in section 009, which is number 62453, then you will meet for lab before class from 930 to 1120. If you are in section 10, number 62454, you will meet after class from 130 to 320. All labs are held in room E3885. That is also on the third floor, but in the E section of the building. The prerequisites for the course are listed on page two. If you do not meet these prerequisites, I strongly suggest that you withdraw from the course. Students who do not meet these prerequisites do not tend to perform very well uh, in this course. Your textbook is Essentials of Human Anatomy and Physiology by Elaine Marib, the 12th edition. In the past, I would tell students it's fine to use a previous edition and you can go on Amazon.com or wherever and get the cheapest book you possibly can find. It's not necessary to get the book from the bookstore because you probably pay more than you would otherwise. However, the college has started a new policy where most textbooks you can lease from the bookstore and you've already paid for that lease when you pay for your classes. So I would highly recommend that you go to the bookstore and pick up your textbook and lease it because you've already paid for the lease whether you use it or not. Uh, so unless you want to keep the book, I suggest you pick it up from the bookstore. You also need to pick up from the bookstore the customized lab manual that I designed for this course. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to find this lab manual anywhere else because I, I customized it for the course. And it cannot be leased because it's loose leaf. And so you must pick this up. Make sure you have both your textbook and your lab manual by the first day of class.
Now let's talk about how you will be evaluated. 60% of your overall grade or 600 points out of 1,000 will come from the lecture component. Now let's break down the lecture component. You will be assigned online activities throughout the semester. They will account for 80 points or 8% of your grade. You will be assigned quizzes throughout the semester. The quizzes will be taken online through Blackboard. Now, where will those quiz questions come from? Well, you'll be looking at online lectures throughout the semester. Every chapter, there'll be a series of online lectures that cover the material. At the end of each online lecture, I provide you with self-tests. These self-tests allow you to self-assess or test yourself on the material. At the end of the chapter, uh, once we've discussed it in class, I select 12 questions from all of those self-tests and they will make up your quiz. At the end of the semester, I will drop your two lowest quizzes so you can bomb a couple of quizzes and it won't even affect your grade. And then I take the average of the remaining quizzes and they will be worth 60 points or 6% of your grade. We will have three in-class exams, each worth 200 points. I will drop the lowest of those three in-class exams. There will also be a take-home exam. That take-home exam will be worth 60 points. It will be open book. It will be open note. And you'll have somewhere in the order of five to six weeks to complete it. And at the end of the semester, during final exam week, you will have a final exam. That final exam will be worth 200 points. Half of the final exam will cover new material, and half of the final exam will cover the material that we previously covered throughout the semester. So in other words, half of the final exam is comprehensive, half of the final exam will be new material. The other 40% of your overall grade comes from lab. You will have three lab practicals or exams. Each will be worth 120 points. Your pre-labs, and there will be 13 of them, will collectively be worth 40 points. So that adds up to 400 points. You will also have quizzes weekly, but the quizzes are extra credit. The quizzes collectively can give you 20 points. So you have the ability to accumulate a total of 420 points out of 400 points. Again, 20 points being extra credit from your quizzes. You'll find the grading scale on pages 3 and 4. It is self-explanatory, so I will not go into greater depth. So to summarize, your grade will be determined by a combination of points from lecture and lab. 600 points or 60% will come from lecture. You will have three in-class exams. I will drop your lowest exam. Each of the remaining two exams will contribute 100 points. You will have various online assignments that will contribute an additional 80 points. We will have quizzes weekly which will contribute another 60 points. You will have a take-home exam, which will contribute 60 points. And then you will have a final exam, which will contribute 200 points, or a total of 600 points for your lecture evaluation. Your lab will be responsible for the remaining 400 points, or 40%. You will have three practicals, each worth 120 points and your pre-labs collectively will be worth 40 points. So 600 points from lecture, 400 points from lab, gives you a grand total of 1,000 total points. Your grades will be posted in the Grade Center of Blackboard and they'll be updated regularly. So you take an exam, I grade the exam, I post the score, and I update your overall grades. So you should know 
at any given time in the course how you are performing. Uh, I am always amazed by the number of students that have no real idea how they're performing in a course. Uh, you should know at any given point uh, in my course or any other course where you stand. Uh, how do you know if you need help or uh, how much additional time you need to spend on a course if you don't know how well you are performing? You should know at all times how you're performing uh, in a course. Let's talk about missed work. So in lecture, I do not allow makeup quizzes, exams, or for you to make up online assignments. Uh, remember that I drop your two lowest quizzes. So if you forget to take a quiz, or if something happens that doesn't allow you to adequately prepare for a quiz or take the online quizzes, don't worry, I drop your lowest two. I drop your lowest exam, so if you get sick or um, there's a family emergency or something happens that doesn't allow you to adequately prepare for exam or to show up to class to take the exam, you will get a zero, but that zero will be dropped. Online assignments must be completed on time. If they are not, you will not receive credit for those online assignments. Now, I do understand that there are things scheduled ahead of time uh, during a time when an exam may be scheduled. And if you let me know ahead of time, let's say you're going to be out of town and you know you're going to be out of town on the day we're going to have the exam. If you let me know that ahead of time, we can establish a time prior to your departure where you can take the exam. Okay. If you tell me ahead of time, I'm more than willing to work with you. But without prior arrangements with me, if you miss a quiz or you miss an exam, you're simply not going to be able to make it up. You will have a take-home exam. That take-home exam, if it's late, there's an automatic 20 to 25% reduction and if it's more than a week late there's going to be a 30 percent reduction let's talk about missing lab quizzes and practicals so your quizzes are going to be giving given at the beginning of lab if you're not there in lab at the beginning to take the quiz you get a zero and you can't make it up the lab quizzes are extra credit so i don't feel uh the need to give makeups if you're there you have a chance at extra credit if you're not you don't um, with lab practicals, again, as with uh, lecture exams, if you know you have a schedule conflict and you can't make a practical during your normal day and time, talk with me. We can arrange for an alternate uh, day and time. There are two other instructors that are teaching anatomy and physiology um, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Together, they have seven other labs, and they'll be giving the uh, same practicals. So, if, again, you let me know ahead of time. I'll work with you uh, to try to arrange an alternate day and time for you to take the practical. However, if you just fail to show up for a practical for whatever reason, I will allow you to make up that practical since I don't drop your lowest practical. However, there is going to be a 10% reduction in your score, and I reserve the right to give that makeup practical during final exams. And I say this because it's really quite difficult to set up uh, a, a lab practical. Well, it's not difficult, but it's very time consuming. Uh, and I may not be able to do that during the regular semester. So we may have to do that during the final exam week. Bottom line is, if at all possible, don't miss a lab practical. The last day you may withdraw from the course is May 2nd. After this date, a withdrawal is not possible and you will receive a grade for the course. Therefore, it's very important that you evaluate your standing in the course prior to this deadline.
I encourage any student considering withdrawing from the course to meet with an academic advisor prior to finalizing their decision, especially if you receive financial aid. If you have difficulty with the course, please contact me as soon as possible. I want to emphasize as your instructor that I do not have the power to, you, to withdraw you from the course. You must do this yourself and you must do it before the deadline of May 2nd. I want to encourage you to read through the responsibilities and policies listed on pages four through six. While I am not going to discuss them in the screencast, you will be held responsible for being familiar with them and adhering to these policies. You will find a list of course resources toward the end of the course information and syllabus. They are self-explanatory and I'm not going to elaborate on them here with the exception of the Anatomy and Physiology Place Open Access website. I do want to spend a couple of minutes to tell you a little bit about that site. The Anatomy and Physiology Place Open Access website is a resource that is provided by the publisher of your book. You do not need an access code or a password to access it. So whether, regardless of whether you got a used book or a new book, you will be able to take advantage of this resource. I've provided the URL here on the slide and also in your course information and syllabus. Um, it's not the nicest and certainly not the shortest URL in the world. I've also have various links to this website from Blackboard. I want to encourage you to take advantage of this resource. There are practice quizzes, review exercises, and various learning activities to help you practice and learn the content of your textbook and this course. In the final pages of your course information and syllabus, I have provided you with the schedule of our face-to-face -face meetings. For each week, I have provided you with the date that we meet, the topics which will be covered in lecture, and the topics that will be covered in lab in italics. I have also indicated the dates of all of your exams and your lab practicals. Lastly, I have provided the days and times that general anatomy and physiology labs are held by other instructors. Although you are expected to attend my labs, if an emergency or something comes up where that is not possible, please let me know and arrangements can be made for you to attend labs taught by these other instructors. For the most part, our labs are synchronized and we cover the same material. To review, these are the topics that were covered in the screencast. I shared with you how you should contact me by email, phone, and the location of my office. We discussed when and where both the lecture and labs meet. We discussed the prerequisites for the course. I shared with you information about your textbook as well as your lab manual. I explained completely how you will be evaluated for the course, both the lab and lecture component. We discussed the policy of making up missed work. I shared with you the lab and lecture schedule. I shared with you the deadline for course withdrawal. And lastly, I discussed with you the Anatomy and Physiology Place open access website. As always, if you have any questions whatsoever, do not hesitate to contact me.